Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Sarah and I'll be taking you through your practice here today. Today's class has been designed around um, mainly around that of the hips and the legs and um, working into the mobility and flexibility here. So there'll be times where we're taking poses passively and actively. So yeah, passive and active work very well together. Um, a lot of people feel that with flexibility, a lot of times that it's got to be very passive, but um, if we build strength and encourage activity within our poses, that actually helps the um, joints and ligaments and muscles to be just as supple as it does with passive. So it's a bit like everything in life, there's always that balance. That yin, that yang, they both go together in sweet harmony. So, when you're ready, just noticing as well, noticing, just knowing that um, we will be working with some props today, um, just using two blocks if you have them at home. If not, just getting creative and finding something that um, works for you in terms of a block. If you don't want to use them also, feel free not to. And come to find a comfortable seat when you're ready. I'm going to begin the practice today with some breath awareness. And just knowing that before we begin today as well, that everything is optional. So I've just said to come to take a seat, but if you want to come and lay down to take your breath awareness, feel free to do so. And the same goes for your poses and postures. If there's anything that you want to leave out, feel free to skip it. But if there's anything you want to add on, feel free to add on. So once you've come to find your comfortable seat or whatever setup you're taking, come in to close down the eyes or take in a soft gaze if that's there for you today. And come in to place the hands wherever they might feel comfortable on the body or away from the body. And slowly start to tune your focus, your attention towards your breath. And just simply start by observing the breath coming in and out. <clears throat> We're not forcing anything or trying to change anything within the breath. We are merely observing it with the mind. As the breath comes in and the breath comes out. And to help with that awareness if you need an anchor. Feel free to maybe use the word inhale as you inhale and exhale as you exhale. Using the breath to guide you. Knowing that if the mind wanders, this is perfectly natural, just Gently taking a moment to acknowledge where it's gone and bring it back to that breath awareness, to the ebb and flow of your breath here at this moment. And then next you might like to either stay with the breath awareness practice or you might like to add on to your breath awareness here. So staying with following the breath in and out. And then next, add on if you want to, maybe bringing your awareness to where the breath is in the body. Do you feel it coming in and out through the nostrils? Maybe you feel it in the chest or the back of the body. Maybe you feel it in the lower rib cage, in the stomach, the abdomen. Once you've come to find where you are focusing, sorry, once you've come to find where the breath is in the body, come to focus and place your attention here, following the breath in and out from this place with your mind's eye. to let go of that breath awareness, just allowing a natural rhythm of breath to be here, inviting in the awareness of your surroundings, 
the external room around you, maybe any sounds, the temperature. And then gently opening up the eyes, coming to bring your senses fully in. And then if you come to take a seat, we're going to find ourselves on our back. Coming to lower yourself down to the mat in your own time. And we're coming to bend the knees here so the feet are planted firmly on the mat, hips are about hip width apart. And then on your next breath, coming to draw the knees in towards the chest, giving them a little squeeze towards the body, so thighs towards chest. Maybe taking some little circles out through the ankles. You're going to do that and you're going one way, you go the other way. And then we're coming to transition into happy baby. So come in to bend the knees it's as if we're planting the feet onto the ceiling. We're still drawing the thighs in towards the body, but taking them out a bit wider so we're drawing them towards the side body. So the hands can maybe place on the back of the thighs here to begin with. And we're anchoring the tailbone, the back of the, the low back, down towards the mat. Flexing the toes towards the face. And then you might like to stay here, or you can add on. You can either bring the hands around the back of the calves. You can even interlace the forearms around the back of the knees. Or if you want to, you can take hold of outside of your feet to help draw the knees towards the earth, towards the mat. Finding a moment of stillness here. Wherever your setup is, maybe you want to incorporate some movement, taking some rocks, maybe side to side. Before coming to find stillness again. On your next breath, coming to release the grip, whatever grip you took, coming to place the feet down and coming to extend the right leg up towards the ceiling so the leg is straight, foot is flexing towards the face. That left knee is bent, foot is planted on the floor. And then coming to take that right ankle across the left thigh. So we're coming into a number four stretch here. Where with the hip, Focusing on guiding that knee towards the front of the mat, that right knee towards the front of the mat. And you might like to stay here or the next thing if you want to add on, you can lift that left leg so that the knee can either bend and the leg can be parallel or it can bend and allow the heel to come in towards the glute so it's just hovering off the mat. If you want extra, you can interlace the hands around the back of that left thigh, drawing that leg towards the body. And coming to release that grip if you took that option. And then planting that left foot down towards the mat. I'm going to take a subtle twist here. So coming to take the arms out nice and wide about shoulder height as we allow that left, sorry, the right foot to come over towards the left side. If it doesn't quite meet the floor, it's perfectly normal, it's perfectly natural. We're just anchoring that upper back down towards the mat also here. If this is not enough you want to add on, you can take hold of that left foot with the right hand. Finding a little bind here. Just listen to what your body wants. Just try not to push it too fast at the beginning of your practice. And then coming back up through center, and we're going to bring the, that twist over to the other side now. So we're twisting over to the other side, that left knee coming down towards the mat. We've still got that figure four leg set up. You might find this stretch is quite nice outside that left hip. Maybe even coming into the left side body, left side ribcage. And then coming back through center, unraveling the legs. And then on your next breath, coming to extend that left leg up towards the ceiling, flexing the toes towards the face. 
coming over to this side now. So we're coming to place the left ankle over the top of the right thigh. Drawing energetically that knee towards, that left knee towards the top of the mat. Still flexing through those toes, through those left toes. Once again, the option is to either stay here, or you can come to lift that left leg, uh, the right leg, sorry, to hover. Maybe you interlace the hands behind the back of the right thigh. Maybe you take some rocks or you find some stillness. Inviting in that breath awareness here. If there is any tightness within the body, can you send the breath there? You focus on imagining, visualizing, sending the breath to that part of the body that has some tightness, if it's there. And then come to let go of that grip, placing that right foot down. And this time we're twisting over to the right side, allowing that left foot to come down towards the mat. The arms are extended out towards the side. Taking a round of breath here. And once again, if you took that option on the other side, maybe you want to find the right foot with the left hand. Each side might be different. I can't bind on this side, whereas I can on the other side. Once again, tuning into your own intuition, what your body can do here. From a place of safety and comfortability for your body. And on your next breath, coming back up through center. And then we're coming to bring our twist over to the, the other side. So that right knee is coming down towards the floor and so is the left knee. The legs are still in that position so the the um, left ankle is still over the top of that right thigh. Taking a round of breath, coming back up through centre, unraveling the legs, and maybe just taking the feet out nice and wide, allowing the knees to knock into one another, just for a moment of restorative pose here. And then walking the feet back in, bringing them about hip width. I'm going to re-extend that right leg back up towards the ceiling, either pointing or flexing the toes here, finding whatever feels right for you. And finding an arm variation, maybe the palms are facing down or up, beside the body. On your next breath, we're coming to lower the, that, that right leg so that it is hovering off the mat. And we're bringing it back up. As we do so, it's coming past the hip and we're going to pulse it towards the face. Coming to re-hover that leg, the, the right leg, so it's hovering off of the mat. And then re-extending back up towards the body, pulsing it towards the face. If you want a bit extra, you can extend that left leg long. I'm going to take that one more round, so lowering that leg so the heel hovers off of the mat. And then drawing it back in towards the body. Maintaining that flex of that point to help with the engagement here. And then coming to bend that knee, coming out to place the foot onto the mat, and coming to over towards the left side. So we're pointing or flexing the toes here, lowering the leg to hover the heel just off of the mat, and bringing the, the leg back up towards the body past the hip, coming to pulse the leg towards the face. Remembering that engagement, that point or that flex. Coming to hover the leg, bringing it back up, few rounds of pulse, taking one more round. Beautiful. And then coming to place that left leg down to meet the right leg. And we're coming to set up for bridge here. So if you know where you're going, feel free to go there. Or we're coming to place the legs so they're about hip width apart if that feels comfortable for you. And we're going to scoot the glutes now towards the heels ever so slightly. So they're coming further towards the legs. Bringing the hands beside the body, palms facing down. Come to find a sense of engagement through the lower, for the lower belly. So by that we're coming to maybe tuck the tailbone and create that flatness through the lower back. And if that doesn't feel right for you, experiment here, explore here. No, bodies are, no two bodies are made the same. So when we come to lift the hips up for bridge pose, just 
Just notice how that feels anatomically for you before lowering the hips back down. So if that setup of tilting the pelvis, uh, tucking the tailbone and creating that flat back to the mat doesn't feel right for you, take it the other way. So tilt the tailbone, create that arch and then lift the hips. Just noticing maybe what, what one provides you with more comfort. But we are energetically grounding down through the feet. We are engaging the thighs. So even, even place a block between the thighs or imagine there's a block between the thighs. Help to bring that engagement into the legs. Drawing the hips back up, if they're not already, bringing the chin towards the chest. For bridge. Just noticing if the legs are flailing out to one side. Bring that engagement in, imaginary block in between the thighs. Coming to lower the hip back down. And we're going to take that one more time and we're going to hold for a few rounds of breath. If you want to, you can come to interlace the hands underneath the back, shuffling the shoulders underneath it. That's in your practice also. It's coming to lift the hips up towards the sky. If you're coming to interlace the hands, come in to do that now. And then shuffle in the shoulders underneath the back body. Drawing the chin towards the chest. Really grounding down through those feet. And then on your next breath, staying here, we're going to lift the right knee towards the right chest, towards the chest. Extending that leg up towards the sky. Pointing or flexing the toes on your next breath. Come into place that leg back down. Firming down into the right foot, drawing left knee in towards the chest. Coming to extend that left leg up towards the ceiling. And then coming to place that left foot back down. Releasing the grip if you took that option and lowering the hips down towards the mat. Taking a round of breath here. And then on our next breath, we're coming up to find a seat. So you might like to rock and roll up the spine, giving yourself a nice little spinal massage before coming up onto the sit bones. Once you've found yourself here, we're coming to bend the knees, feet are planted on towards the mat. And we're coming into Navasana, into boat pose here. So there's a couple of variations. Once again, if you want to go there, go straight there now. Or if you'd like to begin with taking a few rounds of a mini boat pose, we're going to begin with that. So coming to send the arms out ahead of you, fingertips are reaching towards the front of the room. Find a slight lean back and then come to find yourself onto the tippy toes. So this is one version of boat pose. You'll notice it still engages the lower abdomen, the stomach, the lower back, the hip flexors. They're all turning on. Finding a breath here and then coming back through neutral. And then we're going to add on to sending the fingertips out ahead of us. Palms might be facing towards one another. I'm going to find that slight lean back and then maybe you lift the feet off the mat this time. Maybe the toes are just hovering ever so slightly. Staying here for a round of breath. Coming to place the feet back down. And then taking one more round, finding any variation for you. So that might be sending the fingertips out towards the front and coming to find the legs so that they're parallel towards the mat. If that's too much, maybe you bring the hands behind the back of the thighs. If you want more, maybe you extend the legs up. Come in to find straight legs. And then coming back down, maybe giving yourself a little squeeze, a little hug. And then on your next breath, we're coming to find ourselves into a sit, sit, sit <laughs> into a seat over the top of the hills here. Taking a round of breath and then coming to cactus the arms. So we're coming to draw the elbows in line with the shoulders, fingertips are facing up towards the sky. And we're coming for a few rounds of cat cow here, different variation. So on your next breath, we're going to turn the fingertips down towards the mat so the elbows are now turning up to face the ceiling. As you do so, we're sending the spine back towards the room, chin towards the chest. 
rounding through the upper back. On your next breath, coming up as we come up to rise, fingertips come up towards the ceiling, elbows down towards the mat, and we shine the chest through, bringing a subtle arch through the lower back. Gaze might follow. And just moving between knees, two motions. If that arm rotation feels funky for you, you can always bring the hands towards the thighs and do this version. Or if neither of these feel good for you, come to find your normal traditional cat cow. And just going here for two to three rounds. When you've done your final round, come into place the hands where it feels comfortable for you. Maybe taking a moment to close down the eyes. Tune your attention inwards. And explore that breath awareness here. Lovely. And then opening up the eyes, we're going to find ourselves into a downward facing dog. So just having your props close by to wherever is the top of your mat. Find yourself into your downward facing dog. And once you've come into your downward facing dog, just taking a moment to maybe pedal out the feet, straightening one leg, bending in the other. Just find some length through the back of the legs. Before coming to find stillness. And maybe there's a nice generous bend in the knees here. Helping to create length through the spine. Gazes between the legs. Finding your focal point. And then on your next breath, we're going to come forward into plank, but I want you to think of a cat pose. So we're keeping that chin in towards the chest as we ripple all the way forward, coming into a plank. The head then comes up as if, and then coming into a full plank. So gaze is down towards the mat. And then lifting the hips up and back for downward facing dog again. Taking a round of breath. Drawing the chin in towards the chest, rippling forward again, coming into that plank. And then the gaze comes down towards the mat. So head, spine and neck is neutral. Lifting the hips up and back. If you need a bend in the knees to get you there, please do so. And then come in to draw the chin back in towards the chest, rippling forward back again into plank, and then the gaze comes down into the mat. And then maybe you want to hold here for a round of breath in plank, or maybe you come to find a moment of child's pose. Just take in whatever might be calling to you. And we're going to take that again three more times, but this time it's going to work a little bit differently. We're going to incorporate a cow pose in here also. So coming up to find your downward facing dog. And then we're drawing the chin in towards that, in towards the chest as we then ripple forward to come into fine plank. We're going to bend the knees and they're going to hover off the mat. It's as if you're in a mini tabletop. As you send the hips backwards, towards the heels, think cat, uh, think cow pose with your hips and bring your gaze towards the top of the mat. On your next breath, bring the chin in towards the chest. Come into ripple forward to plank, lowering the knees, sending the hips back, thinking cow through the lower back, gaze towards the top of the mat. As you come into that downward dog. Drawing the chin towards the chest, one last round, coming forward into plank. As the knees come to hover, gaze comes towards the top of the mat, then cow with your hips, push up into downward dog. Come in to find your neutral downward facing dog here. And on your next breath, come in to extend that right leg back behind you for three legged dog. Bend in the knee, bringing the knee towards the chest, stepping that foot through. Come in to lower that back knee, untucking the toes. And coming up to rise for low lunge. Take a moment here to set up your foundation. And then coming to frame that front foot, coming to tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. And coming to lower that back knee, untuck the toes, coming up to rise. 
And we're going to take that two more rounds. Come into frame the front foot, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. And taking that one more round, coming up to rise for your low lunge. Frame the front foot, tuck the back toes, lift that back knee. And we're going to all meet back in that low lunge. Coming to frame the front foot, tucking the back toes, lifting that back knee, and then sending the right foot back to meet the left foot. Finding yourself in your plank. Taking a round of breath here. Maybe you lower the knees. And we're coming to lower ourselves all the way down towards the mat. Thumbing down through the tops of the feet. We're going to hands beside the ribcage, energetically drawing the elbows in towards the body. On your next breath, coming to lift the head, lift the chest for baby cobra. Coming back down. On your next breath, pushing back up through tabletop, tucking the toes and lifting the hips up and back for downward facing dog. Next breath, coming to extend that right leg back behind us one more time. The three-legged dog, coming to bend the knee, bring the knee towards the chest and stepping that foot through. Coming to lower that back knee, untucking the toes and coming up to rise. Low lunge. Having your props, blocks, whatever you might be using close by and then coming to frame the right foot with those. So we're coming, you might actually even bring them back past the knee. And then once you're in your low lunge, come in to bring the hands towards the blocks. Drawing the hips back so the front leg is straight. And then come in to peel the toes off the mat, drawing them towards the face for a half split. Going to move in and out here, so coming to find your low lunge. Maybe the hips become a little bit more passive down towards the ground here, allowing them to come through and then drawing the hips back, coming to find that half splits. Take in one or two more rounds, like so, and then finding yourself back in your half splits. Once you found yourself in your half splits, start to bring some awareness into the hips. Can you draw that right hip back, left hip forward to create a even distribution here. Using the blocks to help support you. And then we're going to work with opening and closing the hip joint here. So we're basically, imagine you're turning a tap with the leg, with the foot. So we're sending the toes over towards the right side. And then coming back through centre, turning the toes over towards the left. And it might be very micro movements. It might not be very big movements at all. But we're just taking two to three rounds on each side. Coming over to the right, and the left, and the right, and the left. Bending back through that knee, coming back to find your low lunge. And coming to bend back through that front knee. Coming to tuck the back toes. And we're going to work with passive and active here one more time. Not one more time, but again, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so think of finding some engagement in that left glute, switching on the left leg. And we're coming to draw the heel towards the left glute. And then coming to lower. If you find you're getting a bit crampy here, perfectly normal, but feel free to skip this part if you don't like the cramp. Maybe don't come up as high. Taking one more round here, of allowing that active range of hamstring curl. And then one well, next time we come up to bring that leg, so we're coming to bend the heel to sorry, bend the knee, bringing the heel towards the left glute. We're going to reach that left hand back behind us, take a hold of the ankle, and find in a more passive stretch here. So we're still kicking that foot away from us but we're also offering it support. Maybe you allow the hips to sink down a little bit further. And then coming to release the, the hand, 
being conscious, not to let the foot just flick back, still finding that activeness as we lower it back down towards the mat. Come in to remove any props, framing that right foot, stepping the right foot back to meet the left, either come in to find a round of flow, a round of vinyasa, or come to find your child's pose. Wherever you are, we will all meet in downward facing dog. There is no rush to get there, taking your time. And from downward facing dog, come to send the left leg back behind you for free legged dog. Bend in the knee, bring the knee towards the chest, step in that foot through. And then coming to lower that left knee, untucking the toes and coming up to rise for low lunge. Taking a round of breath. And coming to frame that front foot, tucking the back toes, lifting the back knee. As we've done on the other side, we're going to flow in and out here. So we're going to take another two on each side. Using your breath to guide you. Cultivating that awareness of breath. Where is it in the body? Maybe it has moved since the beginning of your practice. When you've done your whoa, when you've done your final round, we're going to all meet in a low lunge. And then coming to frame that left foot, tucking the back toes. Lifting that back knee, coming to step the left foot foot back to meet the right. Either in a plank pose here, or finding the knees to mat. Coming to lower all the way down to the mat, untucking the toes, drawing the elbows in towards the body, flowing down through the feet, and then coming to lift the head, lift the chest for baby cobra. Lowering the head back down, chest back down. Firming down into the hands, pushing back up, tucking the toes, lifting the hips up and back for downward facing dog. Taking a round of breath here. On your next breath, extending that left leg back behind, behind you for three legged dog, bending the knee, bring the knee towards the chest, set that foot through, come to place the back knee down, untuck the toes, coming up to rise for low lunge. And then drawing those props or blocks back beside you if you're using them. Coming to find your low lunge here on your next breath, drawing the hips back towards the heels. As you do so, toes will draw towards the face. Finding half splits. And then we're going to flow in and out here. So coming to find low lunge. Pulling the hips back for half splits. Coming back forward. And then drawing the hips back. Coming to find your half splits. And once again, just bringing awareness to the hips. Drawing that right hip forward, left hip back, creating that even distribution here through the hips. And then we're coming to turn the tap on the left side this time. So we're turning the toes over towards the left side and then turning the toes back through centre and then towards the right side. So we're just getting into the hip socket in a very different way here. And quite often we move forward, we move side to side, but we don't spend much time rotating through this part of the leg. I'm just going at your own speed, maybe taking a pause on anywhere that feels a little bit sticky. If we're coming back through centre, bending back through that front knee, coming into your low lunge. Coming to tuck the back of the right toes. Find that sense of engagement through the, through the right glute, through the right hamstrings. Turning energetically on the leg. And then we're bringing that right heel towards right glute for a hamstring curl. Coming to lower that leg back down. And taking one more round, lowering the toes, and this time, next time we come to lift the leg, we're going to reach the right arm back, at, the right arm back behind us, taking a hold of the right ankle with the right hand, 
And we're still energetically sending those toes away, the heel away from the body. And then come in to let go. But once again, we're not flicking the toes towards the mat. We're allowing it to come down towards the mat nice and slowly with control. And then come to front at left foot, stepping the foot back to meet to the right. Either go for a round of flow or come in to find a moment of child's pose. Wherever you are, we will meet on the mat kneeling. There is no rush. Taking your time to come there. And we're coming to find um, frog pose next. So we're coming to take the knees outside of the hips. So imagine a frog. So you might like to begin maybe by coming to find like a wide-legged child's pose to begin with. I always find this quite a nice version to come into it. It's taking the knees out nice and wide and then walking the hands forward so they're underneath the shoulders. I then like to send the legs out so that the ankles are in line with the knees. So you can see why it's called frog pose because you look like a little frog. <laughs> And then we're coming to place the forearms down towards the mat if that feels good for you. Just bringing the awareness into the hips so they also roughly in line with the knees. Does that feel good for you? If it doesn't, take a different variation. And allowing yourself to soften in here. And creating a little subtle arch through that low back. So bringing in that cow back, that imaginary tilt. Well, it's not imaginary, sorry, it's actually a tilt of the lower back. So that cow pose. And then on your next breath, we're going to find, this is a passive version, we're going to find more of an active version now. So I want you to imagine you are drawing the knees in towards each other. So what that's going to feel like is you're pushing your knees down in towards the mat. So we're going to do it for a round of five breaths. So once you are ready, we're going to, we're going to turn that on. So come in to push the knees in towards the mat. You might feel the glutes turn on, the legs turn on, the hip flexors turn on, and then come to soften. Taking a round of breath here. And then we're going to go again. So come in to turn, to push the knees in towards the mat as if you're drawing them back in towards one another, really finding that sense of engagement. And then come in to soften. Maybe you even notice that the legs want to widen a little bit more. And you can use the thumbs to help guide them out a bit wider if that is good for you. Taking a moment to soften here. And then we're going to go one more round. Just coming to drive the knees down in towards the mat. Refinding that engagement, turning the legs on. One, two, and then soften. Lovely. And then coming up onto the hands, walking the hands in towards the body, maybe allowing the toes to come back in towards the body to touch and gently guiding the legs back into one another. And then coming up to find your downward facing dog when you are ready. There is no rush. If you want to take a moment of child's pose, maybe you want to take a round of flow to rinse out through the legs, feel free to go. Feel free, free to go there. And then on your next breath, once you're in your downward facing dog, we'll all meet there. And we're coming to extend that right leg back behind us for three-legged dog. Coming to bend the knee, open the hips, so we're sending that right heel towards the left glute for scorpion pose. Maybe taking some little circles out through the hips. And then come to take your gaze over the left shoulder. Look for the, for the right toes. And then coming to re-extend that leg back behind you for three-legged dog. Taking a round of breath. And 
And coming to draw forward for plank. Once you've found your plank, drawing the heels energetically away from you, so they're towards the back of the mat. Turning on through the legs, legs finding some real buoyancy and energy here. Coming to hover the left leg, or the right leg, sorry, so the right legs roughly in line with the hip in the plank, in this plank pose. And then we're going to turn to pivot onto the left blade edge of the foot. The right leg is coming back behind us. And we're lowering the hips down towards the mat for a moment. We're then coming up to draw the hips up towards the ceiling, finding your version of wild thing. Slowly lower the hips back down towards the mat. Coming back through that plank, maybe taking a moment of tiger's curl, drawing the knee in towards the chest before finding three-legged dog. And then coming to find your downward facing dog, taking a moment of breath here. Re-extending that right leg back behind you, coming to bend the knee, and as we draw the knee towards the chest, just going to hover here for a moment on your breath, extending that leg back behind you. And on your next breath, we're going to bring the knee towards the chest, but this time we're sending it over towards the left tricep, so we're twisting over towards the left with the knee. We're extending the leg back behind us, three legged dog. On your next breath, draw the knee through center and then turning it over towards the right elbow, right tricep. Really extending that leg back behind you. And then coming to bring some awareness to that foot to the right hand. As we then draw the knee in towards the chest, we're going to step that foot through the outside of the right hand. So coming to find lizard lunge. Taking a moment to set up your foundation here. Maybe you're coming rocking backwards and forwards in your lizard. Or maybe you're finding some stillness. And if you want to, we're going to be here for another couple of rounds of breath. You might like to bring the forearms down towards the block. Or maybe the forearms are coming all the way down towards the mat. Just take in two rounds of breath here. Just finding whatever variation feels good for you. On your next breath, we're turning the right toes out to face the long edge of the mat. Find some buoyancy through this back leg as we come to step it towards the top of the mat. Finding the toes turning out and lowering the hips down. Drawing the hands to heart centre, elbows towards the inside of the knees for Malasana. On your next breath, coming to bring the hands up in front of you on towards the mat, lifting the hips up for a variation of forward fold. I'm going to take that two more times. Come into love with the hips, draw the hands to heart center for Malasana. Placing the hands down, drawing the hips up towards the sky for forward fold. Using the breath to guide you. Coming to find one more round of each. Finding yourself in a forward fold, we're going to heel toe the feet back into centre, bringing them in line with the hips or whatever feels right for you. Finding your forward fold, your variation. And then coming to find some groundingness through the toes, through the heel, coming up to rise. Allowing the hands to circle around and ahead, drawing the hands through. Palms might meet, drawing the hands through heart centre. I'm going to find a moment of Tadasana. Maybe closing down the eyes. And taking a moment to observe how the body feels here. And we're going to turn to face the long edge of the mat, bringing the feet to touch. And we're going to turn the toes out so the heels are touching. And then we're going to take that again, but this time we're turning the heels out. And then we're taking another stance, turning the toes out. So we're turning the feet out, so it's like a very wide malasana kind of setup. 
So we're coming to set up for horse stance here. So you might like to place the hands to the hips or maybe the hands come out in front of you or maybe even interlace the fingers in front of the chest. And then on your next breath we're coming to lower the hips and they're coming just past the knees. We're really drawing those knees out to the back of the mat, to the back of the room. It's not a easy pose horse stance and we're going to be here for another round of breath. And then coming up, straightening the legs, maybe you draw the hands up towards the sky. Palms come down through heart center. Taking a round of breath. We're going to take that two more times. And coming to send the hips down, the glutes down. So they're coming just below the, the, the they're just below the knees. Sending the knees, driving the knees out towards the back of the room, finding that engagement through the thighs, through the glutes. Coming up to right, straighten the legs, maybe the arms come above the head, palms might meet as they draw down through heart center. Taking a round of breath. Coming back one more time, lowering the hips. And coming past the knees. Really finding that engagement, driving the knees away from you towards the back of the mat, towards the back of the room. Finding that engagement in the glutes. One more breath. Coming up to rise, bring the hands above the head, drawing the palms through heart center. Whew. That was a uh, tough work. <laughs> maybe for you it wasn't. And maybe just some kind of to walk the feet back in heel toeing them to come to take a moment to tune into the breath. Have you closed down the eyes, bring the hands beside the body for a moment into dasana. We're coming over to the other side now, to the left side. So on your next breath, bring the hands up towards the sky. As the palms meet, draw them down through heart center. Fold over the top of the thighs. On your next breath, come to find a halfway lift. Come to fold over the top of the thighs, frame the feet, step the right foot back and the left foot. Come to draw the hips up and back for downward facing dog. On your next breath, extending that, right, that left leg back behind you for three legged dog. And then coming to bend the knee, send that left hip over towards the right glute, opening up the hip for scorpion dog. Maybe circling out the hip here, out the knee, sorry. If you're going one way, go the other way. And then re extending that leg back behind you. And then coming to find downward facing dog. Rippling forward, coming to find plank. On your next breath, coming to hover the left leg. Coming to turn onto the blade edge of the right foot. So then that left leg back behind you, lowering the hips down. On your next breath, sending the hips up towards the sky, arm reaching up above you, stretching away from the body for wild thing. And then coming to turn to face the body back towards the mat. Coming to find plank. Maybe you take a moment bringing that left knee in towards the body to find a three-legged dog. Uh, knee towards chest, tiger's curl. And then drawing the hips up and back for downward facing dog. Finding a round of breath here. On your next breath, coming to extend that left leg back behind you, bending the knee, bringing the knee towards right tricep, right elbow. Re extend the leg back and up. Bending the knee, bringing the knee towards the chest. Re-extending back to three-legged dog. And then coming to bend the knee, bring the knee towards left tricep. And then coming to find three-legged dog. Coming to maybe gaze to the left hand. Bending the left knee. As we bring the knee towards the chest, we're going to step that left foot outside the left hand for lizard lunge. Taking a moment to set up your lizard lunge, find your foundation. If you want to, you can either, once again, 
You can actually bring yourself onto a higher setting if you find that lizard lunge palms onto the mat too much. You can even lower that back knee if it's too much through the legs. Or if you want to, you can bring elbows down towards the mat or elbows on towards the block. We'll be here for another two rounds of breath. Then coming to turn those left toes out, creating some buoyancy, maybe rocking backwards and forwards through that right leg. As we then step the right foot forward, turning the toes out, coming to draw the hips down from Malasana. So the elbows are inside the knees, inside the thighs. Gaze is ahead, chest is nice and open. And then next breath, placing the hands down towards the mat, sending the hips up for forward fold. And we're going to go through this two more rounds. Move in with your own breath in your own time. And we're finding ourselves in a forward fold, heel toe and the feet back in. Coming to frame the feet. Step the right foot back and the left foot back. Either coming to find a downward dog, maybe a round of flow or a child's pose, whatever might be calling to you here. We're all gonna meet in a downward facing dog. Once you've come to find your downward facing dog, taking a round of inhale and exhale here. On your next breath, coming to extend that right leg back behind you, bending the knee, bringing the knee towards the chest before stepping the foot through. We're going to angle the right knee behind the right wrist and then come to place it down. Back toes are still tucked. We're walking them all the way back until we can't walk them back anymore and then placing that back knee down, untucking the toes. So we're in our pigeon pose here. If you want a block or something that you can help to elevate that hip up, feel free to invite that in. Just taking a moment to settle in here. If you find you have any knee discomfort, maybe you take the knee out wider than the hip. And maybe drawing that heel in towards the groin. And on your next breath, we're going to find an active pigeon. So we're coming up, coming up to rise. Sending the arms back behind us, puffing the chest out ahead of us. If that's too much for you, come back to a still active ver version of placing the palms out in front of you. If you're in your active pigeon, we're going to hold here for another round of breath. Turning on the glutes and then coming to fold forward. So we're all coming down to find forearms towards the mat. Maybe if that doesn't feel right, once again, just staying up on the hands. If you want to come down even lower, maybe bring the forehead all the way down. I'm just taking a round of breath here. And coming back up to rise. Coming to remove any props from underneath that right hip if you've took it. Placing the hands back down in front of you. Coming to tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. Firming down into the hands, finding that buoyancy through the legs. We're going to come to lift up. Coming to find child, uh, Tiger's Curl, bringing that knee back towards the, towards the nose. And then sending it back up for three-legged dog. Coming to find downward facing dog. Taking a moment to either pedal out the feet. If you want one final round of flow, feel free to go there. Coming on to the left side, coming to find three-legged dog, extending that leg up high, bending the knee, and then bringing the knee forward, angling the knee towards the left arm as we then come to place the left knee behind the left wrist. 
walking those right toes all the way back before we can't anymore and then placing the knee down coming to untap the toes once again coming to place any props underneath that hip if it's elevated maybe taking that knee out a bit wider past the hip or bringing the left heel in towards the body if it feels more comfortable for your flexibility taking a moment to set up your pigeon pose here And then we're going to come to find that active pigeon. So coming to walk the hands towards the body. And then they might come behind you. You might puff up the chest a bit. Send the heart forward. Maybe the hands might even come above the head. Just noticing what that does to the body though. Does it feel comfortable? Does it not? Listen to yourself. If it doesn't feel right, come out. And then on your next breath. Coming to find that more passive pigeon. So we're coming to lower the cell ourselves down towards the mat. Maybe you can make a pillow with your hands to the head. Maybe the forehead is down all the way towards the mat. Taking a round of breath here. And then coming back up, coming to remove the prop from underneath the lift hip if you took that option. Either feel free to come back out as we just did a moment ago, coming through tiger's curl to downward dog, maybe taking a round of flow, or coming off to one side and swinging that right hip, that right hip, right leg forward. And coming to maybe close down the eyes, just take a round of breath here if you are not taking a round of flow. And we're all going to meet in a seat. So we're going to come to find Bhadakanasana, so seated butterfly. So there's a couple of variations you might like to take here. So we're going to draw the feet, the soles of the feet towards one another, create that diamond shape with the legs. So you can either take quite a wide one, or you can draw the, draw the legs closer towards the body. If you want something a little bit different, and if you're at home, you have a wall close by, you can come to bring the back so it's flat to the mat, uh, the back so it's flat to the wall, creating that Balakanasana shape with your legs, maybe even bringing the blocks to help bring a bit of weight into the legs. We're not forcing them down, we're just allowing them to create a little bit of weight and creating a nice long spine. If you want something a bit more passive, in this pose, you can bring the blocks underneath the legs. Just finding any variation that feels good for you. Just finding any setup that feels good for you to finish your practice. Maybe drawing the chin in towards the chest if you're taking a more relaxed version. Maybe you want to fold forward a bit. And wherever you are, we're going to find three rounds of breath here, or as many feels right for you. breath coming out from wherever you are removing any props maybe taking the feet as wide as the mat just sending the hips over towards the right over towards the left for windshield wipers and then we're coming to lay ourselves all the way down to the mat knees are bent feet are planted on your next breath, coming to send the legs up towards the sky. So not engaging here, we're allowing them to just hang heavy in the air for waterfall. If you want to, once again, and you're at home and you want to bring the legs up the wall, feel free to do so. You can also end your practice there if you want to. This is one of my favourite poses, waterfall. So nice bringing the energy back towards the body. We spend so much time on our legs and they do so much for us. It's nice for them to have a different perspective. Get the blood flowing in a different way. 
Maybe if you're finding it hard to let any tension out of the legs here, maybe giving them a little wiggle and a jiggle, front, backwards and forwards, maybe side to side. And then coming to find that stillness, allowing the arms and hands to maybe lay beside the body. Maybe you want to incorporate them in with it also. Allowing them to come up to hang nice and loosely in the air. You can also elevate the hips up here if you have got a blanket or something you want to place underneath the hips. And we're going to be here for another few rounds of breath. On your next breath, coming to lower the hands, lower the legs, and coming to find your Shavasana. If you want to finish your pose with legs up the wall, it's a beautiful way to finish, feel free to do so. If you're finding your way into Shavasana, coming to take the legs out as wide as the mat maybe, bringing the hands out as wide as the mat. Just noticing the points of contact as you set up, do they feel comfortable? Maybe bringing the shoulder blades underneath the shoulders, elevating the heart a bit, creating a little shelf for the chest. Maybe you invite some props, maybe bring in a bolster underneath the back of the knees. And closing down the eyes or taking a soft gaze if it's there for you. And letting go of your practice. Coming to find your final rest in pose, your Shavasana. And when it's time, I will gently guide you back to find a seat. So we start to bring some awareness into the fingers and into the toes. Maybe taking some little subtle movements. And extending those movements into the wrists, into the ankles, into the legs, the hips, the shoulders, the chest. Just taking any movement on the mat at the moment that feels fluid for you. Maybe that's a full body stretch. Maybe you want to stay where you are to finish your practice, if you're enjoying your Shavasana. If not, we're going to come to roll over to one side. Come to find a seat. Drawing the hands to heart centre. Bringing the chin towards the chest. Come to bow to yourself. I invite you here to take a moment to acknowledge something that you're grateful for today. It's only of an invitation. If you don't want to do it, if you don't feel called to, feel free not to. Just taking that moment, that gratitude could be for yourself for showing up here today on the mat. Or it could be for someone that done something for you today. Maybe someone held a door open for you, or a stranger smiled at you. Just acknowledging something small, it doesn't have to be something big. And once you've found that moment of gratitude, holding it in your heart, giving it the acknowledgement that it deserves, 
and deepest gratitude to each of you for your practice here today. Thank you so much for allowing me to guide you. Take care.